Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and today we have a treat for you. This is the Sony X90K. Now, if you've been following my channel, you probably realize I've been doing videos on the X80K and the 85K, but this time we have the 65 inch big boy. This TV has full array LED, and that's gonna give us that really good local dimming. Plus it has the XR processor. In addition to that, it has the XR contrast booster, it works off Google TV. And of course, it has that famous Sony color science with the Tri-Lumius. In addition to that, this is 120 hertz, and I can't wait to get out of the box to show you guys what it's all about. As always, this is a unboxing and my first impressions. As I get everything filmed, we'll go over the full review. So sit back and relax, and let's jump right into it. All right, guys, we're gonna get this out of the box, but since it is a 65-inch television, it takes two people, so I have my friend Justin over here to help me out once again to get this out of the box. So Justin, the first thing we need to do is take these little clips out, starting off with the backside. Now since we have the clips out, we're gonna go ahead and lift this box, but be careful because again, TVs are known to fall out yep. based off of the packing. So it looks like this one's packed pretty well. There we go, let's go and put this back here. And looks like we have some styrofoam. All right, we're gonna just put it on the back side so we can take a look at where the feet smell on. Another thing about this television, it comes with these very heavy feet, and the great thing is they snap right in place. So I'll go and put this side in and just snap it like this. And if you ever had to remove it, you just take two fingers, pull it right out, makes it easy to mount on the wall. So Justin, go ahead and do your side. So now that we got the TV together, I'm gonna to show you what comes in the box. So of course, it comes with the remote control, and it also comes with the power cord, the setup guide, and some adapters to help mount the TV on the wall. Now we're gonna take a look at the back of the TV, which is not a big deal because chances are this will be against the wall, but I'd like to show you anyway. Up here we have some ventilation slots and some more ventilation slots here at the bottom. It's got this little square design that goes all the way across, and you can see there's a nice little triangle look right there. Over here we have the power cord input, which is standard, and Justin showed you guys adapters so you can pretty much put it into these holes so you can put on your wall mount bracket. Over here we have the inputs, which consists of two USB inputs, and you can use these for keyboards, thumb drives, your audio files, and I haven't checked it with a hard drive, but I do know that one of them is 3.0. You also have a fiber optic input. You can also use this TV as a center channel with adapter just by plugging it into there, and then it has four HDMI and it's really confusing because some people say that two of these are HDMI 2.1s and two of them are 60 hertz, but I'll check that out just to make sure. And I will tell you that if you have gaming, three and four will support auto low latency where these two will not. You also have a LAN connection plus Wi-Fi is built in, RS-232 uh, serial port for service, and you have an IR blaster input as well as an ATSC 3.0, so it does support that new next gen 4K over the air content. So overall, buying a TV like this, it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to get everything set up, assuming that you have your Wi-Fi password and you have a Gmail account already set up. That's about how long it took me to get through all the menus. Now when it comes to this TV, it's available in a 55, 65, 75, and an 85 inch. And according to display specifications, all these TVs are 120 hertz and they all are VA panels. So we'll check out the viewing angles when I get to the full review. When it comes to the design, you can see it has that nice thin bezel on the top of it and that tapers over to the side of the television. And I really like this low profile design that they have on this particular model with the nice slit in the center. Now one great thing about these feet is that you can adjust them by moving them up and that way you can accommodate a sound bar, but if you don't have a sound bar, again, you can just leave that nice low profile. A feature that you definitely enjoy that Sony's done is that they replaced all their K-series with this smaller, thin profile remote. And if you compare it against the older one, you can see that it's much smaller and compact. Now this came with the J-series, so if you have that series, this still works, but you can see they got rid of a lot of buttons that most people don't use, but some people still like the number pad, especially if they're using over the air TV tuner, so they can go directly to the numbers. But you can go into the menu and add favorites and stuff like that to offset that feature. 
I haven't did any gaming on it yet, but as expected, if you have a PS5, you want to use input three or four for this reason. You have these options down here, and since the PlayStation does not support Dolby Vision, you want to go ahead and switch it to VRR. That way you don't have to worry about any of the settings. It's going to control everything that you need. Next, I want to check out input one and two because there's no confirmation what it really supports. So you can see right here, I have 4K at 60 frames per second, and then we're gonna switch over with the 120. And as you can see, there is an option for it. So when you try to change it, you get this pop-up and it lets you know that it doesn't support it. So if you're a gamer, let me summarize this for you. Inputs one and two, it's good for 4K at 60 frames per second. If you drop down to 1080p, you can get 120 frames per second, which is really good for someone who doesn't need that high resolution. Now inputs three and four both supports 120 hertz gaming at 4K resolution. So there you have it. Now I'll leave you guys with this before I get the full review. This TV has a beautiful picture. The colors pop. The Sony Trilumius color profile just works so good at bringing out all the colors and details in the television. And what really stands out to me is the orange and the reds are very vivid and details. And you can see right here as an example, how well all the colors are looking really good. And I can't wait to put some real content on this TV so we can actually see what it really can do for its performance. Now, as far as the black levels, I haven't did any adjustments on it. They look pretty good, but again, to really diving down into the picture profile, I'm not gonna really know how good it is. Now, in general, VA panels, when you get to the side, they pretty much lose all the colors, but just looking right here, you do lose a little color over here to the side, but not as bad as I've seen the other TVs. So it seems like they figure out a way to get really good colors out of this and also been to achieve a really good viewing angle, being that it is that VA panel. So here's my first impression of this TV. Let's start off with the cons that I've seen so far. I wish this TV had three HDMI 2.1s minimum. You use two of them for your gaming consoles, for your Xbox Series X and your PS5, and have a separate one for eARC for your soundbar. So if you have two of those gaming consoles and you wanna get the maximum out of it without having to plug them in and out all the time, you would definitely have to get some kind of switcher or you have to run one of those consoles at 60 frames per second, which is okay for the most part. Also wish at this level that you would get a remote control with lights in it, that would be a plus. Overall, from that point, I think everything else looks good so far. Now, I like this design a little bit better than the 80 and the 85 because it just seems like it's built out of better material. Overall, it's not as plasticky on the front of it. I like the fact that these legs are very sturdy. And one thing that a lot of people don't know is that this is a true 10-bit panel where the 80 and the 85K are 8-bit panels with two bits of frame rate control. So this is the real deal right here. Other than that, I can't wait to get into doing my full review. And if you guys are waiting on my other reviews, they will be coming out soon. I just wanted to get all these TVs on box first, and then I'm filming the review behind that. So if you guys are interested in a television like this, I will leave all the links in the description below so you guys can go check it out and read more information. Now I do have a question for you guys, and leave this in the comments. Do you own a Sony television? And if you do, why did you buy it? And do you like it? And what would you change about it? So that's all we got on this video. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Tech Steve.